In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the Media Bay and how you can use the Media Bay to improve your music production, workflow, and creativity. The Media Bay lives over here in the right hand side, and when you click on it, you can see all the different items that are included. We're going to start by adding a VST instrument, and I'm going to add Groove Agent SE. And now I can see all the content packs that I have access to. If I click on one, then I can also select a preset and go down the bottom and use this keypad to trigger a groove. If that's the groove I want to work with, I simply pick up on it and drag and drop the preset name over into my project window. Now I can open the instrument up by clicking on this button and I can start to preview the different patterns or grooves by clicking on the pattern tab and then pressing down on one of the pads. If I decide that's the one I like, I can simply drag it straight over and dump it into my project. And now I've got a groove. So in a matter of seconds, we've already got this creative groove, which we can use as the basis for a musical idea. In the loops and samples tab, you're going to find all the content packs that you have access to. So I'm going to go down and choose the hip hop content pack. And up the top, you can see there's categories, styles, character. So the media bay is basically a library and I can use these sort of guidelines to click on different presets and find something that I want to use. And it's immediately previewing this loop over the top of my project. Now that's interesting because every sample comes with a tag. Now these tags will specify the tempo and the key. Now you can see my tempo is 120, but the loop tempo is different. Now I just want to show you these three magic buttons down the bottom. And this has got a lot to do with the tempo. First of all, the autoplay will define that when we click on a sample, it will automatically play. If we turn it off and click on another sample, we have to go down and use the Media Bay Transport. So the next button here is the all important button. This is Align Beats to Project, which means that this loop is automatically tempo stretched into my project tempo, which is 120. It also means that it's transposing the key of the sample into the key of my project, which is G. And finally, on the right, we've got wait for project play. So that means as soon as I press play on the transport, the sample will start playing and it's going to be in context with where I am in my project. So it's a great way to be able to preview it with what you already have. Drag and drop the sample over and you can copy and paste it by clicking on the handle on the right hand side and stretching it out. Now my sample is sitting perfectly in place with the drum groove that I created earlier. So at the moment we're working with audio files, but you can also work with MIDI in the media bay. I'm going to select the EDM toolbox here. One thing worth pointing out is you can filter the type of files you want to see by clicking on this area here and just putting ticks next to the files. And that way they'll appear in the search. There's so many presets in here. So once again, it's a great idea to use things like the category, the style and things like substyle to find something that you're really after. Once again, it's a matter of selecting a preset to hear how it sounds. Now, the interesting thing about these presets is it's a MIDI file attached to an instrument sound. And it's also got a tempo and a key. So MIDI files are a lot more flexible because we can actually change the sound later on if we want just by swapping out a preset in the instrument. Now I just want to show you something quickly. Up here in settings, I can define whether I want to see the key of my project at the moment I'm turning it off or by ticking it to actually see it. And this is where I can set the key of my project. So this is what the media bay is going to follow when it's transposing any of these presets or any of the samples that I'm listening to. I like this keyboard part and I also like the bass, but they're not working together. So I'm just going to mute the keyboard part and drag the bass part in. And this is the awesome thing about working with the media bay. We can just go, no, I'm gonna shelve that idea for a while and I'm just gonna try and take my track in a new direction. Once again, I can transpose the pitch of my track and everything is transposed. So I'm going to just sit on this idea for a little while and go and see or investigate some other options in my media bay. So maybe I need to come down and check out a synth part. So something sort of atmospheric. And once again, you're getting the idea. It's a matter of going through and just selecting a preset and seeing how it feels over your track.
I'm going to give that a go. Once again, drag and drop over into the area where you want the MIDI file to be placed. Now we've got a VST instrument with a pattern that we brought in via the MIDI bay. We've got a factory sample, and we've also got two MIDI files that are attached to instruments. Now I'm using the file browser button to have a look at all the files that I have on my external and internal hard drives. So any attached media will show up here. It's pretty cool in terms of file management because if you've been collecting your own sample library, you can instantly integrate it into the media bay and start previewing your samples in context. Cubase will read the tempo and the pitch tags in your title, but you can also add your own. Once again, when you're ready, just drag and drop it over. If the sample rate's different, you'll be prompted and asked if you want to change it. There's something a little bit weird going on here, and that's because the original sample is still being previewed over here on the right hand side while the sample in the project window is playing. And that's because we've selected to preview the WAV file whilst the project's playing. Turn the button off and you won't hear the preview. So you'll only hear the audio that's been played out in the project window. But of course, remember to turn it back on if you do want to preview any further sounds or samples over here in the media bay. External samples can all be at different volumes. So the media bay's also got a volume control down here in the middle. So just move that slider to the left to turn the volume down if it's playing a little bit loud over the top of your project. And it's highly likely this is something we're going to have to address once we've imported it. I'm just going to turn off the preview so I'm only hearing the audio in the project window. Now I can use this clip gain to reduce the actual gain of the sample, which will bring it more in line with the other audio files I've got there. So it's always a good idea just to check the levels when you import a sample into your project. I'm just shortening this so I've got a nice tight even 8 bar section of music, which I've created very quickly. I want to show you another cool way of integrating the media bay into your project. And I'm going back into loops and samples here, and I've got the sampler control selected down in the lower zone. And I'm going to select the hip hop content pack again, and I'm just going to find an individual drum hit. So once again, I've only got the MIDI component selected here. So I need to select audio files to be able to see the audio files in this content pack. So I'm just going to turn these buttons on so I can preview the different hits. Now it's a short sample, so it's repeating over and over again. But when I find something I like, I just drag and drop it into that main area in the sampler control. And now I can trigger that sound straight away on my external MIDI keyboard, which means I can start recording that sound in a matter of seconds. So you can see how blisteringly fast it is to integrate samples into the sampler and start recording them. So, so far we haven't actually recorded anything. All we've done is use components that we've sourced from the actual media bay itself. But doing things this way means there might just be one little part that we're missing, like in this case, a hi-hat. So it's really easy to just to drag and drop it and start playing away on an external MIDI keyboard. There's more to the media bay. It's not just about loops and samples and creating music. You can also enhance the sound of your music by using presets. So I'm going into this audio tab here and I'm using the search function to try and find something that will fit one of these tracks to just try and make it sound a little bit fatter. So maybe we start with the lead vocal. So I'm going to find the lead vocal section here and now I can see all of the lead vocal track presets that I have. And these are a combination of things like effects and inserts and EQs and, you know, even things like ambience. And I can see all of these effects that have been added once I've dragged that preset over onto the lead vocal track. Now, if I don't like it, I can load these effects up and I can start editing them. I can also turn them on and off if I don't want the whole entire combination. If I go up to EQ, you can see it's given me an EQ setting, which is fairly generic for a lead vocal track. So I can edit that if I want, or I can go in one by one and start to look at these effects and try and maybe just manipulate them a little bit so they suit the track that I've got. It's quite fun working this way because you don't need to go looking for things. The presets have kind of given you 
the basics that you might expect to see over the top of these tracks and you can pick and choose and be as creative as you want. So would you think to go and look for this combination? Maybe not. So it's always a great idea to look at track presets, try them out, but also be creative with your own ideas. You can also add individual effects straight into your project using the VST effects tab. When you think there's something maybe you'd like, you can just drag and drop it once again over onto the track and instantly you can open up the insert and start editing it. So it's a really quick way to be able to source effects and integrate them into your project. Cubase comes packed with presets and you can see them all in the media bay. I can even see all of the channel strip presets right here. So if I open up the channel overview window here and make sure it's selected to always be on top, then I can solo a track that I might want to work with. So for instance, let's solo the bass and I can select different types of presets and drag them over. Cubase comes with a diverse range of presets for different types of applications throughout the whole production process. So at the moment, I've got my stereo output and I'm putting a channel strip preset over the top of my stereo output. And that's got a number of different types of components that's really going to help control my sound, give it width, and make sure that it's going to sound okay on an external device or an external listening environment. So that might be things like you know, headphones or in the car or uploading it to SoundCloud, for example. So it's not just about channel strip presets. We've also got effect chain presets and track presets, which are really going to help you control the overall finished product of your track, be it just a simple idea like I've created here or an entire production that you're ready to share with the world. Thanks for stopping by. If you're into this video and you've learned something, please give us the big thumbs up Drop us some comments below and subscribe to the Cubase channel for plenty more videos just like this. I'll see you there.